Hey guys, it's Mr. C. A. Lehman from reinforcemyfaith.com, and I wanted to read the Noah's Order Lectionary 209, first reading being from 1 John chapter 5, Psalms 147, the Alleluia Mark 9 6, and then the actual Gospel of Mark chapter 1, verses 7 to 11. Let us start with the first reading in 1 John chapter 5, verses 5 through 13. St. John states, who is it that overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the witness, because the Spirit is the truth. There are three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is far greater. For this is the testimony of God that has borne witness to his Son. He who believes in the Son has the testimony in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne to his Son. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who has not the Son has not life. I write this to you who is who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Just a couple of notes on that one. Um, some older Catholic translations have uh, an addition that reads, These are three who give witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Despite the fact that this line is a clear expression of the Trinitarian doctrine, the Holy Office decreed in 1927 that Catholic scholarship, after full examination of manuscript evidence, is not bound to accept this text as part of the original wording. That's why it wasn't included in this reading. And it, some commentary from uh, Scott Hans and Curtis Mitch New Testament for for First John. 5, 8, specifically about the three witnesses, evidence of Christ's humanity is present in the liturgy, where the Spirit never ceases to bring Christ to the world through the water of baptism and the blood of the Eucharist. Faith is the incarnation, is thus supported by the joint testimony of history and liturgy. John was uniquely qualified to insist on this. He not only engaged in sacramental ministry, but he was the sole apostle to witness the Spirit, the water, and the blood come forth from the crucified body of Jesus in John 1930 and 1934. A mosaic law requires joint testimony from two or three witnesses to uphold a claim in court. And three witnesses become one in baptism for, it, for if you eliminate one of them, the sacrament ceases to be. Without the cross of Christ, water is simply natural element. Without water, there is no mystery of regeneration. And unless one is baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, there is neither remission of sins nor reception of spiritual grace. This is by St. Ambrose. Going back to the liturgical reading for 209, we go to Psalm 147. And part of that wrong psalm reads, Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your bodies and your borders with the best of wheat. He fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinance to Israel. He has not done. He has done thus for any other nation. His ordinance he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Heavens were open, and the voice of the Father thundered, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. From Mark chapter 9, verse 6, the Jesus Transfiguration. Alleluia, alleluia. Now I'm reading from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 7 through 11. And John the Baptist preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens open up and a spirit descending upon him like a dove. And the voice of the came from heaven, saying, You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. I am not worthy. Evidence. This is from commentary. To finish up here, this liturgical uh, lectionary reading. 
Evidence of John's humility, removing and carrying the sandals was a menial task reserved for slaves serving their master. John regards himself, John the Baptist regards himself as unworthy to perform even a slave's task for the Messiah, Christ, his kinsman. Allegory by St. Gregory the Great, a homily of his. Jesus' sandals made of the skins of dead animals represent mankind's dead to sin. Once Christ closed himself with our nature in the incarnation, the miracle proved so profound not even John was able to unfasten or explain this mystery of the God made man. The baptism of Jesus. As one who is sinless, Jesus has no actual need for repentance. He nevertheless received John's baptism to identify with sinners as part of God's plan to save him. CCCC, Catechism of the Catholic Church, 536. The voice of the Father, the baptism of the Son and descent of the Spirit marked this episode of Revelation of the Blessed Trinity. Mark chapter 1, verse 10, the heavens open up. The underlying expression is more dramatic than the translation, since the Greek verb schizo means to rip apart or to tear. The heavens were thus torn open as the sound of God's voice was descended of the Spirit. Elsewhere is marked the same verb depicts a tearing of the temple veil, an episode similarly accompanied by the declaration of Jesus' sonship. Jesus is the Son in John's and St. Mark's Gospel as one of his themes. A dove, an image with various associations in the Bible. A close connection between a spirit and a dove is found in Genesis. The Spirit of God hovered over the waters at creation. Said Noah sent forth a dove to hover over the flood waters once creation was cleansed and renewed. The post antediluvian world. If that makes sense. Jesus' baptism likewise inaugurates a new beginning for the world through the Spirit and prefigures his own cleansing through baptism. My beloved son, the Father's announcement echoes several Old Testament passages. OT. Isaiah 42 1 prophecies the com prophesizes the coming of God's pleasing servant who will rescue Israel and the light of the nations. Jesus fulfills the role as a suffering servant and the light of the world. Psalm 2 portrays King David as an anointed son of God. Jesus is here, is here the royal son anointed by the spirit. And three, the same title once again given to Isaac, where the Greek Old, Trans Old Testament translates only son in Genesis 22 as my beloved son, as sacrifice Abraham's near sacrifice of Isaac, or the binding of Isaac, procured a divine oath of worldwide blessing. So Jesus is sent by the Father to fulfill his, his covenant oath and unleash the blessing promised to the patriarch. That has been lectionary readings of 1 John, Psalms, Mark, and Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 7 through 11. This has been Mr. C, a layman, Mr. Colon from ReinforceMyFaith.com. Take care, God bless, and seek the true, the good, and the beautiful.